It is time for episode number two. Episode number two of what? It's time for episode number two of predicting the overall of the live series diamond. Yesterday, we did the American League hitters. Today, we're doing the National League hitters. Now, I don't know if the mic will ever pick this up, but right now in New York, the wind is acting up and you can literally hear it from the inside of your house. Now, I don't know where y'all live, but it might be an everyday thing in New York. I would say it's definitely not an everyday thing, but as of right now, I could definitely hear it, which is crazy to me. I don't experience that too much, but regardless of that, I just want to let you all know that if you're new here, end up enjoying today's content, make sure you guys hit that like button and that subscribe button as well. We drop these videos every single day at 12 p.m. Eastern. It's labeled under miscellaneous in terms of the playlist. So just in case you ever miss one or you're new here and want to catch up, all you have to do is click on the channel, click on the playlist, and then click on miscellaneous, and there you will find all these videos now we also have a series that goes on at 5 p.m eastern and a series that goes on at 10 p.m eastern now at 5 p.m eastern it alternates between tiers and nms nms is no money spent is where we have a team full of common players and the only way we could replace these common cards is by going on nine game runs in terms of battle royale meaning we have to win nine games and then replace these common cards with the diamonds we earn either from winning nine 12 or going flawless when it comes to tiers it's almost the same concept but we take the team full of common players into ranked seasons and the way we replace the common cards is based on the common players performances in the ranked season games now at 10 p.m eastern we alternate between tiers and well, it's not called tiers. It's actually headliners and pack summer. Pack summer is where we drop 100k subs on headliners packs, and then headliners is where we go ahead and start off with 5k. And throughout only buying headliners, we try to make a 100k profit. Now, enough of the talking. We got Ronald Acuna Jr. waiting for his overall. So let's jump into it. Ronald Acuna Jr. We're going to be talking about his numbers against left-handed pitching and then against right-handed pitching. We're going to be talking it in terms of three-year average and then his 2019 numbers. So we start with the three-year average versus left-handers, 285, 566, right-handers, 285, 521. So three-year averages, he has the same average against left-handed pitching and right-handed pitching. When it comes to his 2019 numbers, 270, 540 against left. 282 512 against right so he decreased both average and slugging in the left-handed department but it wasn't by much i'd say it's on pace with his average and then versus right-handers he dropped it by three in terms of average and dropped it by nine in terms of slugging so i could see them shaving off a couple of points out of every single attribute but in return, what they're going to do is they're going to give him a little bit of a higher fielding. So I think he definitely stays at an 89 overall. And if he has a hot start like he did last year when it comes to hitting, or if he has a hot ear in general as he did last year, then I do see those points going back up. And I do see him going up to the 91, 92 maximum tier of a diamond. I mean, the kid is only 21 years old. So the ceiling is basically through the roof for him. If that's even the correct terminology for that but next up on the list we got the first freshman, freshman, freddie freeman now three-year numbers are 283 499 versus left 312 561 versus right we only look at average and slug it 2019 255 441 against left 310 589 against right and if you guys hear something in the background it's the wind that i was telling you all about and look at that as soon as i start talking about it it stops but freddie freeman he dropped both his average and slugging against left and then versus right handers he increased his slugging dropped his average by two points so i would say versus right handers he stayed on par now once again just like acuna i do see them shaving off some points against since his left-handed attributes and i see him dropping down from an 89 overall to somewhere along the lines of an 87 overall diamond his attributes versus right handers are most likely going to stay the same so that allows him to stay above the 85 to 86 threshold considering he has some pretty good fielding as well now we're going to go ahead to anthony rendon he's now an angels player so three year averages left handers 311 616 Right-handers, 309, 538. Last year, 316, 618 against left-handers. So he increased both of them, even though 
you would think that it's difficult to increase both of them considering they're above 300 and 600 he managed to increase it even if it was only by a couple of points and then versus right handers he did the same thing he increased them but it was by more points than he did against left handers so i could see all his hitting attributes getting a couple of points added to it i see him staying although at a 90 overall i don't think he's on the same tier as alex bregman so i don't see them pushing him to a 91 overall now if they do what one one of my subscribers suggested yesterday and they give Bregman improved fielding and Bregman goes up to 92 overall then I do see Anthony Rendon starting it off as a 91 overall with increased hitting attributes now next on the list for us is going to be Bryce Harper now his three-year averages are versus left-handers 277 508 right-handers 275 last year 283 583 against lefties so he increased numbers in both departments right handers 249 474 he dropped on both departments now just like most of these players what's going to happen to harper is versus left handers his attributes are going to be increased versus right handers they are going to be decreased he's an 85 overall so it depends on how big of a hit they're going to take on Harper's attributes against right-handers. To me, SDS loves Bryce Harper. So them taking him out of the diamond spot, I don't think it's happening. I think he's going to start the year off as an 85 overall diamond. And if he struggles within the first two months, then he will be one of the first diamonds to go ahead and drop out of diamond. But the chances of him actually starting it off as not being a diamond is pretty slim. So I give him an 85 overall. Next on the list is going to be JT. Now, JT was a late diamond call up last year. Let's see his numbers. Three year averages, he's hitting 257, 467. Right handers, 283, 478. Last year, 276, 524. He increased both the average and slugging department against lefties versus right handers, 275, 481. So he stayed on pace. He stayed on average. I say he gets his contact and power versus left increased in terms of attributes and his fielding is not going anywhere, especially at the age of 28. I say the minimal increases will allow him to stay at an 85 overall, but I wouldn't be surprised if he also starts off at an 86 overall, but I'm going to keep him at an 85 overall for sure. The Phillies are going to have two 85 overalls. Now, Javier Baez. This is someone I wanted to speak about because I see people argue all the time whether Javier Baez is a top 20 player or if he could even be compared to Francisco Lindor. And to be completely honest with you all, if you look at the three-year averages and you're looking only at hitting, they're not too far apart. In certain categories, Javier Baez is better than Lindor. And then, of course, in other certain categories, Lindor is better than Baez. But I would say that in terms of hitting, they're pretty equal. What really differentiates both is going to be the fielding. That's what really takes Lindor or gives him that slight edge above Javier Baez. But enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and look at the numbers. Three-year averages for Javier Baez. 308, 589, right-handers 274, 506. This year, or last year, he hit 304, slug 618, so he stayed on pace with the average. He increased the slugging versus right-handers, 275, 510. He stayed on average for both of them. So the only thing I see being increased is his power versus luck just by a tad. I see him staying at an 86 overall. I don't think they'll give him a boost to fielding, and I definitely don't think they'll give him a boost to any of the hitting attributes. To me, an 86 overall is perfectly fine for Javier Bob. Now, Chris Bryant, looking at his three-year numbers, versus left, 317, 610, versus right-handers, 275, 485. Last year, 295, 629, he decreased in terms of average, he increased in terms of slugging versus left. Versus right-handers, 279, 495, he increased in terms of both, but it was very minimal. What I see happening is they're going to shave off maybe two points from contact versus left and add it to power versus left. He stays at an 85 overall as well. I don't see any of these Chicago Cubs players moving down in terms of overalls. Next on the list is going to be Christian. So Christian, to me... He is the number two, arguably number three player in the MLB right now. And it's between him and Cody Bellinger for the number two and the number three spot. So let's look at Christian. His average against left, three-year average, 294, 515 versus right-handers, 318, 582. Last year, he dropped his average against left, 
277, but he increased his slugging, 555. Versus right-handers, he increased in both categories by a ton. He hit 358, and he slugged a whopping 734. That is unbelievable, especially since he's facing right-handers most of the times. To slug 734, that is out of this world. So what I could see happening is his contact and power versus right probably going to stay exactly as you see it, if not increased by one or two points. Then his slugging versus left, meaning his power versus left, that's probably going to go up three points. And they're probably going to shave off two to three points off his contact versus left. His fielding is not the greatest in the world, but him being a 93 overall, if Mike Trout starts off as a 94 overall, I definitely do see Christian Yellick staying basically at a 93 overall next up on the list is going to be the man that surprised the world Cattell Marte three-year averages against lefties 314 570 righties 278 462 last year 333 630 so he increased in both numbers against the left-handed department versus right-handers 327 577 he increased in both departments as well so i definitely see that power versus right being increased to start off and will be the show 20 and then it's contact versus left and power versus left they're perfectly fine and then it's contact versus right that's perfectly fine too so i definitely do see him getting a power increase especially versus right handers i i, I say that's gonna take him up a notch to an 87 overall i'm gonna give him a plus one to actually go ahead and start off and will be the show 20 next up on our list is going to be nolan arenado so so nolan Nolan Arenado against left handers, his three year average is 366, 730. Right handers, 284, 519. Last year, he hit 315, slug 611 versus left handers. So he dropped in both departments, but I mean, he's hitting video game numbers. So even when you say he dropped and he's still hitting those numbers that he did, you have to say that is unbelievable. And then versus right handers, he's hitting 315, 573. He increased in both departments. I don't see them shaving off any points against his left handed attributes because he's still hitting video game numbers. But versus right handers, I do see an increase to contact versus right and a little bit of an increase to power versus right as well. I say, although. He remains a 92 overall. He does not make the jump to 93 overall. He starts off the year exactly at the overall he's currently at, which is a 92. And then we got Trevor Story. Trevor Story, his three-year averages are versus left-handers, 314, 631. Right-handers, 262, 490. Last year, he hit exactly the same, 314, 314 in terms of average, and then 564 when it came to slugging. So he dropped his power versus left. But then versus right-handers, he hit 286 in terms of average, 550 in terms of slugging. So he increased his slugging versus right. To me, his power versus left should still be higher than his power versus right, although. And his contact versus right should have some extra points. His contact versus left is perfectly fine where it's at. So what I would be doing right here is I would be swapping his power versus right with his power versus left and giving him some points to his contact versus right. I'd start him off at an 86 overall, especially with his defense only improving every single year. I think that next year it's going to improve as well. So they'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Start him off at an 86 overall. Now it's time to talk about the juicy one. My favorite player from the Dodgers currently before it was Yasiel Puig now it's cody bellinger so three-year averages versus left-handers 258 511 right-handers 287 583 last year he hit 280 so like 596 against left 317 645 against right so in terms of the power attributes i don't see them going anywhere in terms of the contact attributes i don't see them going anywhere as well and the reason that he starts off at the same overall as christian yellick and actually is one under Mike Trout is because of the simple fact that unlike Christian, his defense will hold him there even if he struggles a little bit when he comes back in terms of the bat. But if he comes back and he has that amazing first half, just like he did last year, then I definitely see him going up and at least matching Mike Trout. Just like if Christian can come back, have the same amazing year that he had last year, and even improve his defense just a tad more, he matches Mike Trout as well. So 93 overall is what I start off Cody Bellinger as well. And last but not least for the National League, we have Manny Machado. 
Now, Manny Machado, he's a very interesting player when you look at his three-year averages and then compare what he did last year. So three-year averages versus left-handers, 293, 568 versus right-handers, 264, 465. So he does not hit for power against right-handers, and he struggles when it comes to hitting for average as well. But if you look at the 2019 numbers, it's literally the same thing, except he hit a ton of better even though that was probably the worst wording I could have used. But he hit way better in terms of contact versus left and power versus left. He hit 315, slug 685. So those are video game numbers. And then when you look at his average versus right and slugging versus right, he hit 239 and slugged 400. So to me, if I'm being honest with you all, what's keeping him a diamond right now is his elite defense and elite arm strength. But when you look at a right-handed hitter that has 500 plus at bats versus right-handed pitching and he only hits 239 and slugs 400 what's keeping him alive in terms of the diamond district is the ability to hit over 650 in terms of slugging versus left and over 310 in terms of contact versus left so his numbers against left-handers i don't see them going anywhere but i do see them shaving off big time contact versus right and power versus right i drop him down to an 85 but i would not be surprised if he starts the year off at an 84 overall so unlike the american league most of the National League players, they are actually going to stay diamonds with the exception of one or two maybe starting off as golds. But I have high expectations for every single diamond player in the National League. If you guys did end up enjoying today's content, make sure you guys hit that like button or that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow me on all social medias at BladeMiss. Stay tuned because tomorrow we will be dropping the American League pitchers at 12 p.m. Eastern. And as always, have a blessed day and night. Stay positive, stay safe, stay blessed. And I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace out.